right, we're here in La Piedad with Ivan Salazar, uh, the COO of Red Sun Farms, El Rosal in Mexico, Michoacan. Um, so last year, uh, we did a disinfection here in Red Sun Farms. They have uh, numerous acres here, but I'll ask Ivan here to explain a little bit about uh, how many acres you have here and what exactly you grow here. Okay. Well, uh, what we do here basically is we run high-tech greenhouses and we have uh, bell peppers and tomatoes, different varieties of tomatoes. Uh, mainly beef tomato, TOVs, and uh, then uh, we have some cherries, we have some uh, grapes, and uh, grapes and cherries in different varieties and color. So basically our operation is around 60% uh, tomatoes and 40% bell peppers. Uh, we have right now 115 hectares running and operating and uh, we're still bailing a little more hectares. Uh, so, so 115 hectares? Hectares, okay. yeah that's correct. So basically one of the main things that we have to fight here is uh, plagues and diseases for tomatoes. We're uh, divided in uh, three different zones right now which is one location right here close to La Piedad. Uh, another in Estación Pencamo, uh, another location in Numaran, Michoacán. And we're building another project in uh, Guanajuato, close to San Miguel de Allen. Okay. So basically that's who we are. Uh, so Red Sun Farms uh, employs roughly 1,300 individuals. So Actually, we're around 2,000 right now. Oh my goodness. Okay. The 2,000 is fantastic. So we're, we're looking at almost 2% of the population of La Piedad which is an incredible contribution to, uh, you know, to the town that uh, they support. Um, so Ivan and I uh, basically established connection uh, a year and a half ago uh, when he heard about uh, TechMist and uh, our ability to control uh, disease, basically bacteria, mold, fungus, viruses, viroids, viroids being the most difficult to kill uh, and in the hot temperatures, the hot climates, the viroids, the viroids actually are uh, uh, quite aggressive. So uh, Ivan and I talked um, uh, a year and a half ago and we came down and did about 60 acres, 70 acres last year I believe. 70 acres. 70 yeah. acres. And uh, we basically uh, focused on Clavibacter. Uh, I mean some of the beneficial side effects like Bicudo and some of the other insects that we killed were simply beneficial but tell us a little about your clavibacter uh, like what kind of percentages what were some of your maximums what were some of your minimums uh, and uh, a little bit of an average on some of the clavibacter issues you were having okay well basically what we were trying to do last year when we got in touch with you is uh, trying to find a solution for clavibacter specifically right mm -hmm. so uh, what happens here is that in, in, in tomato crops the main concern is clavibacter to control it because uh, at some point uh, in, during the crop you're always going to have it. So mm -hmm. basically a, a way of controlling it prior to finding your solution was to during the crop do the let's say the cultural habits of the plants that take them out and uh, be really uh, secure in the hygiene of the personnel and the entries of the greenhouses. More so, mechanical removal exactly. too, if you saw it you would exactly. remove it. Exactly. So we had it control at a certain point but still you have, you have a lot of damage at the end of the crop. So talking about percentage, percentages, uh, we would end up with a crop that was affected around 10 to 15 percent. So it's pretty much if you go for a 365 days crop doing the interplantings and whatever. So um, when we uh, started last year to do the disinfections, we realized that uh, this year we had uh, actually one of the greenhouses we, we didn't have find any clever back there at all. So. Uh, some of your growers that I was speaking to um, had mentioned that in some of the places, let's say um, Natudo Bell, I believe in Way's greenhouse last year, uh, had up to 75%, it was a little bit more dramatic. Of course you had some greenhouses that were very low, uh, that were almost not showing it at all. But uh, in some of those greenhouses we had absolutely nothing, right? They were, the results were uh, a total kill, which mm -hmm. is of course what we want to have and which is what Tecmo School is and which is obviously what you want to have in your yield is zero clavibacter. Luis, Luis, Luis assistant. Grower's assistant yeah. for Red Sun Farms yeah. in La Pira. Yeah. Okay, so my company, Tecmis, was here uh, last summer yeah. and we did uh, a disinfection for 70 acres. 
So we did uh, many for Clavobacter, right? Yeah. But you say that many places here had some Clavobacter, which I knew. Uh, yeah. Sometimes the highest was 70%, and some of the lowest maybe 10%, 15%. But we did our spark treatment, and uh, you said you saw a big difference. So in the one we did last year, uh, how much right now is there maybe? So, well, uh, for this time of the season, uh, we're beginning to try to in three green houses, green house number eight, green house number nine, and green house number 11. I have the numbers, the total of plants I lose in every which, every each uh, green house. Yeah. And it's an old plant. And you have that in your documentation yeah. here. Yeah. So you see the exact numbers. Yeah, I, I know the exact numbers. And Really, really, is a big difference between one one greenhouse and another greenhouse. One with disinfection and another without disinfection. The greenhouse with disinfection have only four percent dryer. With our product, yeah. with Spark. Yeah. So, but the other greenhouses, some maybe have 45, 50 percent. 44, 45 percent. Right. And it's less. Right. The, the infection of the Very much less. Yeah. So I have talked to the owner of the place here, and I found out that the reason why uh, maybe you have four percent because I like to see zero percent. Yeah. Okay. Also. So I like to see zero. You too. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think maybe the reason why uh, we have four percent is uh, maybe seed. Okay, new plants have a little bit, maybe. But I think main reason, the only greenhouse we put the carts in, picking carts, uh, those greenhouse, like Noe's yeah. uh, greenhouse in Atuto Bell, had 70% Clavobacter. Now, zero. And because we had all the carts in there. Because Clavobacter lives on the surface of a cart for uh, eight months. Eight months. So it's very important to put the carts inside and then we do the disinfection for a complete disinfection. So I think now we see that the product works well, yeah. but now it's strategy. We need to get the carts in, yeah. maybe uh, you know gloves, who knows, plastic, different things, kill everything, start fresh. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, thank you very much for your uh, time. I appreciate it and happy to help. Thank you. It's awesome. For us, it's just a great result. And some of the issues that we found that we uh, got Clavibacter back was be mainly because we didn't get all of our tools inside the disinfection when we did the disinfection. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, another question I had for you was uh, the comparison that I did for you uh, when we compared all the different greenhouses that we did, I believe we did 11 or 12 last year. Uh, when I compared and gave you the carbon number, so in other words, how clean a greenhouse was compared to uh, the dirtiest greenhouses. Um, something that Technus is quite proud of is that this is kind of the first time in the history of greenhouses where you could actually measure your results. You can actually see when your disinfection has peaked uh, and uh, combining all the data that our canaries actually connect or collect, uh, we can actually come up with a carbon number which gives you an idea on how clean the greenhouse was before. Uh -huh. Is that beneficial for, uh, for a grower to be able to see, oh yeah, we used a lot of pesticides, we have pesticide residual, uh, maybe it wasn't washed good enough, is that helpful to you? It is, but it's not as helpful as it's going to be in two years when we need to do the disinfection again and we're going to have those yeah. results. Exactly. Yes. Because for you to analyze what the result would be, since we didn't have anything to compare prior to this, Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. You see what I'm getting? So 100%. next time we do the disinfection in those greenhouses, we're going to compare where we were when we start up and now the results. So the result is going to be a lot, more, it should be a lot more cleaner, a lot more efficient the next step like that disinfection. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward for in two years or three years to do that, to compare it. To be then able to keep see. the history results to have a, a better analyze of the results of the disinfection and, and the control inside the greenhouse during the crop. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. That's a good point, actually. I mean, there's got to be a first in order exactly. for there to be multiples. Um, another question I had for you is um, biologicals. Of course, you're pretty focused on biologicals. Exactly. Maybe uh, 
even more so down in uh, Mexico than in Canada because of uh, you know the climate, the temperature. Uh, so, so with bio biologicals, um, when you pay for your insects, they come in. Uh, it's not often that you have a perfect take every time. And a lot of times uh, we've discovered that the reason for that being is that there's pesticide residual mm -hmm. uh, that could be, let's say for example, when you took the crop out, you fog, uh, there's maybe some permethrin or whatever uh, pesticides you've actually used, there may be some residual. Then when you get your beneficials in, uh, they can actually suffer a little bit from that. Now, one of the benefits that uh, TechMist has is that we actually break down those carbon chains, right? So. A permethrin chain we actually steal the carbon out of that mm -hmm. break it down oxidize it so it's no longer a pesticide uh, how beneficial is that going to be for you I mean uh, it's quite expensive uh, for I mean Canada some of the numbers going around are you know a dollar eighty a square meters for uh, uh, you know a dollar eighty per square meter for beneficials right mm -hmm. so but then if it doesn't take uh, then they either have to go over to pesticides to control their insects or they have to try another take so well, what is it for you I'm curious. I haven't ever asked the, you. The this. thing is that uh, we've been working with uh, biological control here for a long time now. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's, it's funny because when you mentioned when you use chemicals, when you do the cleanup and all that, basically what we do is uh, try to do the cleanups the most natural way possible. Perfect. Okay. So we don't we don't actually focus on a lot of chemicals during the, the season or the cleanups. Basically, what we do is. Uh, um, quaternary water, the Ammonia. salt waters, yeah, some yeah. of that. It's basically what we use. Virsid and Vircon, exactly. which are very good. Exactly, yeah. we, we don't use that big of chemicals when they do the cleanups. What we do focus on is to actually really clean. So yeah. use the soaps that we need to use, use peroxide like we've been using the last two years, yeah. uh, uh, and try to do something more, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, natural, because one of the main things that we know about the flakes is that if you use chemicals, you're gonna make them stronger next year. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we're trying to do it the opposite way, and it's been working for us. And now that we're doing the disinfection, well, it's better than anything because how they're gonna resist that, you know? Right. So uh, it, it's basically we're working on another emphasis for that, you know? Okay. So uh, the, the 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 really connection with the disinfection right now is that it's helping us to do a surgical procedure in one day. Absolutely. So that's very efficient for us. Yeah. And, and it gives us. A couple of days more of the crop to, yeah. to produce a little bit more, to pick a little bit more, and do the disinfections and the cleanups with uh, some days uh, fewer than we used to do it. So that's really efficient. That's the main focus, right? I'm glad you actually brought that up because uh, I know that even with our washing system, which is not in Mexico yet but will be here, uh, you know, we can wash 200 acres in a single day uh, with all the equipment that we have, but. I, I'm glad you pointed that out, the fact that you can actually do the disinfection overnight when nobody's in, there's zero downtime, and in the morning uh, your workers can actually be ready to go back into the greenhouse exactly. and it's fresh. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's a safer environment for them because you've actually removed residual potential pesticides, which I know you guys don't use a lot of because of your control systems here. Uh, your operation is very organized and clean and I noticed uh, the water trucks coming by to keep the dust down. Uh, and I've noticed a lot of good, uh, you know, biological protocol uh, for control that I've mm -hmm. uh, that I've seen, and I travel a lot. I see a lot of different greenhouses, uh, so that's very exciting to be able to see that. Uh, and you notice that you notice that time uh, savings is money in your pocket. Exactly. And uh, so in Canada, we generally have uh, for every 10 acres, it's a thirty thousand dollar a day loss in growth production. And so I'm sure that's very similar out here too. Uh, lost production is lost money, so this is fantastic for you to be able to uh, get up and run. So with our new system that we've uh, developed, um, the Cube, we essentially can ship it uh, directly into Guadalajara or to, to uh, Lyon, depending on uh, what aircraft are flying there. And it actually is very efficient for us uh, because uh, we can now bypass uh, the transit. And the transit before took whatever seven eight days mm -hmm. to drive out here. Um, our cube uh, now is allows us to actually get the system to you within a couple of days. If we have the paperwork, it allows us to get the system to you. I can fly in, do a treatment anywhere, uh, anywhere you need uh, within a couple of days' notice. So another question I had uh, regarding Red Sun Farms is um, with all the different produce and different vegetables that you use. 
do you see TechMist uh, or our Spark application benefiting you in something besides Clavibacter? Is there something that we can potentially uh, focus on to uh, come up with a solution, say for, okay, the Bikudo. We did some tests on uh, basically pepper weevil, um, so we can kill it readily, but there's different thresholds for different insects. Mm -hmm. So once we discover these different thresholds, uh, maybe we can do an insect elimination. Uh, we did in Ontario the other day, we actually trialed a system where we did an in-house uh, gassing with all the plants in. Uh -huh. And we realized that we didn't have enough gas, excuse me, gas in the system uh, to actually react with all the white flies and insects that were there because this particular uh, operation in Leamington was trying to eliminate uh, all his insects before he took his crop out and put it onto his compost piles, uh -huh. which is smart business. I mean, you're not going to want to propagate more, uh, you know, eggs or insects, whatever, for future for future crops. So you want to sterilize that. So this is something that Techmist is actually. Uh, experimenting with but we're also uh, trying to find those right thresholds because there's so much organics inside uh, a greenhouse before we clean out that there's you know ethane ethanol methane yep. lots of different gases coming out that our gas has to then first react with and then of course treat all the surface areas of the plant so mm -hmm. is there anything that you know would you see that as a benefit if before crop takeout of course let me give you an example if you have a greenhouse which is infected uh, with the virus of the white fly TY yeah and uh, it's very complicated to, for you as a grower to get rid of the white fly already inside, even after you do a cleanup or whatever. This will definitely kill all the white fly inside. Oh yeah, for sure. So if you have uh, an infected uh, white fly in there, for sure it's gonna take care of it. Right. And then you can do a start up of a new crop with uh, no problem at all. So okay. you can start your biological control against the white fly or whatever after you do that. But if you have a big, big problem, thrips, white fly, uh, even Picuro, yeah, it'll get rid of it that day. We have the insect snap traps that we, uh, of course, brought last year and we perfected this year. Yeah. Uh, so now we have uh, 100 cartridges uh, with four chambers in each cartridge, so we can actually uh, do many different tests. So if that's any uh, benefit to you in the future, if you want to discover you have a pest, an insect that you want to get rid of, uh, even from rodents on, uh, we can actually uh, get the thresholds. Uh, if you could have some of your growers actually collect the flies, uh, we can put them in the traps and actually do the test live while we're doing a disinfection to show you that we can actually eliminate those insects. Okay. So that's a very big benefit. New test kits. Uh, we've got numerous insects that we've gathered from around the area. We've got pill bugs over here. All right, so here's the results, the final results. We've got a cricket, pill bugs, and spider dead here. We've got the dung beetle dead, the stink bug. We've got uh, two of these, this little flying insect on the left there. That one is dead as well. I believe the black widow is still alive. It looks, it appears to be alive, uh, but everything else in this compartment is dead. Uh, the ants are dead. Uh, earwigs, small spider over there is dead, earwigs again, uh, the beetle here is dead, and the moth is dead. One of the questions that I had for you is, um, of course this year we also introduced the, uh, the pulse cannon, mm -hmm. the pulse mortar as we call it, and um, again the reason, uh, I don't know if I formally introduced that uh, technique to you, but it's actually using infrasound. Uh, it's uh, a pulse wave that actually sends our particles that are essentially 179,000 times smaller than the smallest water droplet that you normally fog inside a greenhouse. Um, so you can imagine these little particles floating around and then having a blast wave that just pushes them into uh, your lava rock, into your substrate, into your uh, you know, fiber, whatever it is in your greenhouse, any cracks and crevice, that pulse cannon creates a uh, sometimes 125 decibel wave uh, that equalizes, that can actually be compared to uh, 
Pascal, so some greenhouses I'm sure you're aware of that you can actually pressurize the greenhouse, right? Yeah, With yeah. Winset and Santa Maria, you can get uh, 17 kilopascals, pressurize the greenhouse. We had phenomenal results. So out of that, we actually came up with a solution of introducing the pulse mortar. Um, obviously, you've heard that, so that's an exciting new uh, um, contribution to the disinfection that we're doing this year. And we hope to see, uh, you know, exciting results out of that as well, just to try and get it that much further than just the surface of okay. the greenhouse. So anyway, uh, I appreciate uh, obviously you having faith in us originally. I mean, I'm sure you talked to other people and did your due diligence, but having faith in us to uh, come out and do the, uh, the first test. And we're extremely excited as, uh, uh, you know, contributors to global solutions, environmentally green solutions, and, uh, and, and efficient solutions mm -hmm. uh, to be able to help you. So appreciate your uh, time, Ivan. Thank you. And uh, look forward to lots of business in the future. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias.